guys, David here, 122, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. The bestest time of the week. And today we are going to continue my series of the best cards in every main set of the game, going for the first one of the new year, Gladiator's Assault. Gladiator's Assault is interesting because I think it might be, I think I remember reading that it's like the set with the most secrets ever. Like the secret rare cards, like just like there's a lot of them in the set, which is cool because I think like all I think it was like all the TCG exclusives were secret or something like that. So that's that's neat, I suppose. It also introduced us to Glad Beasts, which were a meta deck at one point all those years ago. So it was at least meta defining in that fact. However, everything else in the set was kind of bad. Meaning, uh, in order to make this just top 10 Glad Beasts released in this set, which I'm pretty sure you could almost do, I think it'd be all of them, but you could put them in order, I suppose. In order to not be that boring Glad Beast list, I, they only get one spot. Everything else uh, I had a, I, we had a stretch for. Bear with me, however, to give you guys a nice variety. Sacrifices had to be made. As always with these lists, I try to keep, the, keep it in the, the list itself. However, uh, we are way beyond being able to do a bubble so outside support and future support are definitely relevant topics for discussion however they will not be the primary reason for anything being on the list also anything that might have topped a lot may have knocked something else that of the same deck out of the list but that does not make the other card very bad or useless or whatever it just means that i needed a tiebreaker in some fashion and i think using tops for tiebreakers and things like that is certainly a nice objective way of doing it as opposed to just giving some card that saw tons of play a undo snub. However, I that didn't really come into play with this list at all this time. I just figured I would try to keep my rules consistent here. But anyway, number 10. Number 10 is Alien Telepath, a level four reptile with 1600 attack. That's a fire attribute for some reason. Once per turn, you can remove an A counter from an opponent's monster to target one spell or trap on the field and destroy it. Also, he has the standard alien effect where if an alien battles an opponent's monster with an A counter on it, it loses 300 attack during damage calculation only. With 1600 attack, attack modulation of 300, and removing a counter for a spell trap destruction, if you didn't know any better, you'd think I was talking about Breaker the Magical Warrior. However, I'm not. <laughs> Oh boy, am I not. However, the fact that he does seem to share some attributes with a great card like Breaker the Magical Warrior means he definitely earned his number 10 spot on the list, despite the fact that he might be stuck, he might be stuck in a deck that's not the, the, the greatest thing in the world. But, but, he is certainly a good card in and of himself. So, there you go. Number 9 is Expressroid. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm not making a joke here. Expressroid is a level 4 earth machine, which is that's, that's pretty good typing, with the following effect. When this card is summoned, ooh, not special, not normal, just summoned, ooh, Stratos. Target two roid monsters in your graveyard except but express roid and add those cards to your hand. Not even a soft once per turn. It's, it's actually really solid. Very rarely do we get card effects like that because they're easily abusable, because that means a normal, a special, or even a goddamn flip summon will manage to trip this thing's effect and get you a solid, hearty plus two. Obviously, you know, like, it is basically boneless salvage, and salvage is a great card. So, by that same logic, we must say that Espressroid is also Espressroid, like Espresso, as opposed to Express. It's Expressroid, it's not Espresso. Expressroid, Espresso. I, I actually could use some coffee. <laughs> so, okay, whatever. Next. Claudian Turbulence. <laughs> the barrel has been scraped upon its bottom. I wish someone would scrape my bottom. This card cannot be destroyed by battle, which back in the day during the even late GX era, since we didn't have a lot of spot removal ready in our extra deck, something like Castell or Cerberus or Phoenix or I'm trying to think of a synchro monster that would do that. Catastrophe technically is. Oh, wow, I'm drawing a blank. But uh, this is GX era. Fusions are bust, right? So we don't have a lot of the options in order to get rid of things with battle protection. So at this point, this thing would be super annoying. However, it auto kills itself if it's in defense mode. So in order to get a full advantage of that, you have to have it in attack mode, presumably with something cheesy like a, and nowadays maybe Moon Mirror Shield, in order to actually 
really be good. Well, isn't that so weird, though, having to play an equip spell against something that's unkillable by battle just so your opponent doesn't keep ramming into it and take a bunch... Whatever, that's stupid. Anyway, next. When you normal summon this card, you can put a bunch of these dumb fog counters on it for every face-up fog... Cloudian? Is that what these are? Cloudian monsters you control. And the fact that it's a little four fairy for this next part is kind of irrelevant. Uh, fairy cheer girl, I guess. But no, we really care about the fact that it's a water attribute because that comes into play pretty nifty with what you are going to do with those fog counters. You can remove a fog counter to summon a, oh boy, what the hell is this thing called? A Cloudian smoke ball from your deck or either other player's graveyard. <laughs> In case it's a mirror match, I suppose. And that's not once per turn. You can just keep doing it. Just keep summoning smoke balls. And the fact you can summon them from your graveyard means that if you link these stupid smoke balls away, or exceed them and then detach them, or synchro, or fuse them, I'm not sure what you'd be... Oh, no, you could... Invoked could probably do it. You wouldn't. You can just keep making them. So, like, it's like infinite resources, as long as you can keep making these dumb counters. <laughs> that's actually pretty good if you don't consider the power ceiling of the deck itself and just look at this card and assume everything else in the deck is actually able to support this effect, this card is pretty solid. It's basically like Boneless Venus, which is why this thing being a water is actually handy because you can probably like make this star boy. So that's pretty solid. It's really weird that the first three cards in this list are like <laughs> Bad Breaker, Bad Salvage, Bad Venus. <laughs> oh boy, it's going to be a long one. Number seven is Swing of Memories. This card has a bunch of nostalgia on it, and I don't know why. It's like, I've never even seen it, like, before, but it just feels nostalgic. It must be the picture, the artwork, the fact that it's called Swing of Memories. But anyway, what does this normal spell card do? Target a normal monster in a graveyard, special summon it to your side of the field, but kill it during your end phase. It's basically Silent Doom, which is weird, because Silent Doom also came out in this set, and it's basically the same card, except it only summons in defense position, but doesn't let the monster die. So, you, you could really be either of these, uh, it's up to you, I guess. This one probably has more application, application. You can put the monster in attack mode, attack with it, and then like main phase two, link it away or something, do something with it. So, okay, fine. Uh, it's, uh, uh, there's not really much to say about it. It doesn't do a hell of a lot. It's a free summon from your grave. What do you want from me? Jeez, jeez. Number six is Soul Taker, a really, really, really bad movie, but a great episode of MST3K, so that's a thing. Mystical Space Typhoon 3000. <laughs> target one, face a monster your opponent controls. Destroy that target. Then your opponent gains a thousand life points. Ooh, ooh. The problem solving card text on this card makes this effect actually very interesting. The fact that this card contains a comma, then the word then, and fails to contain the words and if you do, implies that these two effects do not happen in the same game instance, meaning that if you were to destroy something like a Yang Zing monster, it misses timing. <laughs> yep, that is how this card is ruled to work. Because it doesn't say and then if you do, like something like diagram, the pop and search, because it says, and if you do, are considered supposedly supposed to be simultaneous game actions, these ones are not. To the best of my understanding, it is the lack of the and if you do. That is from what my takeaway on this whole thing is. So, isn't that just the weirdest thing? So yeah, destroy Yang Zing, destroy your opponent's dupe frog. They're not getting their floats. <laughs> They are getting a thousand life points though. I'm sure they're really happy about that. That's nifty. That adds a weird level of utility to this card that otherwise uh, something might not have. So there you go. A lesson in problem solving text and a decent choice of a side deck option for Nurse Burn. <laughs> oh my God, it's a million degrees in here. Double-edged sword technique. This normal trap card lets you target two six Sams in your graveyard, special summon in attack mode, but they die during the end phase and you take damage due to your life points equal to their attack. Uh, it's a plus one from your grave. It's basically spicy, call the haunted, um, pushes for game. You could make an XC with them. You have tons and tons of options for this. It's a really solid reborn card. Obviously nowadays, like something like Soul Charge, RIP would be better if it wasn't banned. <laughs> yeah, it, it was better up until a few days ago. But uh, at the time, this kind of graveyard recursion was really solid. And the fact that it is a two for one for no life point cost or anything, potentially speaking, and can help you push for game, makes this card actually really good. And this is your six Sam option for the, for the, for the list. The other one, is an honorable mention, because I figured I should at least bring him up, but okay. 
Royal Firestorm Guards. Easy, level four fire pyro is 1700 attack, which makes him pretty solid already, with the following effect. When this card is normal summoned, target four pyro monsters in your graveyard, shuffle them into your deck, and then draw two cards. Woo! Obviously having four pyro monsters in your graveyard is an awfully specific setup and kind of extensive. However, if you're playing something like, I don't know, Volcanics, where you're dumping these stupid scatter shots out of your deck, it's pretty easy to get to that four. So that's a thing. I'm not a, it, it basically, it just, it's a recovery engine for, for, for Volcanics pretty much. Uh, next. Number three is Shadow and Light Imprisoning Mirror. I couldn't pick one because they both do exactly the same thing and they both affect the two best attributes in the game, so I can't even use that as a tiebreaker. Negate all blank monsters activated on the field or in the graveyard. So if you're using Light Imprisoning Mirror, all your light guys can't use their stuff. And if you're using Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, all their dark guys can't use their stuff. So, these cards are great side deck options, especially if there is a deck in the meta that is a light or dark deck, and your deck is not one of those things, because it doesn't obviously get its own stuff negated, and you can use these against your opponent as they are continuous trap cards, so your opponent will have to try to out it by some other means, because all their monsters don't do diddly squat. Unless they're like continuous, non-activated effects. So like, ironically, like, Jinzo can turn this card off. Um, number two is Bestiari. Mm. Gladiator Beast, Beast, uh, Gladiator Beast, Beast, Gladiator Beast, Gladiator Beast Yari is a level four wind winged beast guy. That's an appropriate typing. With 1500 attack and 800 defense with the following effect. If he's summoned by the effect of another Gladiator Beast, you can target a spell or trap and, and, and destroy it. Presumably, if you were to summon this thing more than once per turn, you could just keep popping stuff, killing all the back row. Now, how do you, would you ever summon this by the effect of another gladiator beast? Well, they all have the same effect that the next part of this is. At the end of the battle phase, if this thing attacked, you can shuffle it into your deck and summon another glad beast from your deck. That's how their deck works. So presumably if you summon, you, they all do that. So if you had another one of them attack, you end your battle phase, at the end of the battle phase, this thing comes out, pops something, you, you, you keep doing silly stuff. So, hey, there you go. That's how Beast Jari works. And he was actually on the ban list for a long time because I think you could loop him. Don't quote me on that. I don't know how the deck works and I don't really care. Can't summon a copy of himself though. That's a thing. So you have to kind of figure out how to like, whatever. But yeah, there you go. That's uh, that, that's, that's your, that's your Glad Beast entry. Beast Jari. Woot. And as far as honorable mentions, there ain't no honorable mentions. There's only dishonorable mentions, and there's only the one. It's the worst card in the game. I can't stand this card. Evil Hero Dark Gaia. He sucks. If you play this card, you are terrible and bad, and you should quit Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Actually, for the record, I think he's one of the worst fusion monsters in the game for his level. However, he's not that bad of a card compared to the other 9,999 cards in the game. He's just, for what he is and what he represents, he's not super great. So he's not really a, a dishonorable mention. I'm kidding. He's just pretty lackluster and forces you to run a bunch of dumb beaters you can't summon that end up just being humongous bricks in your hand in order to actually get him to any kind of attack power that makes him relevant. A dumb card, but not a terrible card. He's just not very good. He's, he's horribly, painfully mediocre. No, the actual dishonorable mention for the list is Chaos Neos. Chaos Neos, oh boy, Elemental Hero Neos, Neospatian Dark Panther, and Neospatian Glow Moss. Ooh, it's a fusion of three very specific monsters. How how old school of you. You don't use polymerization to make this thing, you just actually use those guys on the field and shuffle them into your deck. Oh, go. You, they don't even go to the graveyard. They go to your deck to ruin your consistency next turn and stuff. To summon this thing. It's got 3k attack. That's something. He's got, he's got like blue eye stats. Okay. What does he do? Well, during the end phase, you put him back in your extra deck, which is uh, really dumb and bad and terrible card advantage. And whoever thought that was a good idea for these things to do that was an idiot. Cause they weren't, they wouldn't even be great without that. That just is like an insult to interest. Stop! No, but he does, he's got a coin flip effect. Yep, after all that work to get three very specific monsters on the board, just to lose them into your deck and then lose this thing to end the phase, you get a gamble effect out of it. How, <laughs> what? You flip three coins and depending on how many heads you get, that's what the card does. Three heads, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Ah, low likelihood regeki. Nice. You're gonna top deck it more than you use this. Two heads. I'm better than one. 
For the rest of the turn, all face-up monsters your opponent controls have their effects negated. Hey, that's actually worth it. That's arguably better than the first effect, especially nowadays where everything can't be killed by card effects. So, holy crap, that's... That's really broke! One head! Return all monsters you control to the- what? Return all monsters you control to the, your own hand. Ugh. So like, he's probably only bouncing himself if you whiff on this effect because uh, you've probably used every monster you control just to make him. So that's at least- and he's gonna go back to the extra deck anyway, so it's like no harm no foul. I suppose. Rip your battle phase, though. And there's no, like, all tails effect, which would make this thing even worse. So it's just, if you got all tails, it just doesn't do anything. It's a 3k beater that negs you during the end phase, which is, again, bad, but not, not as bad as it could be. However, those first two effects, despite being unlikely for them to resolve, are pretty okay. So, uh, not worth the effort to make this thing, but it's certainly, it, uh, it would certainly be a blowout if you could do it. The reason why I feel like this card is a dishonorable mention, though, is there is another card that came out in this set called, uh, the Legendary Gambler or something, and he's literally, like, almost the same card, but he's a dark level 4 spellcaster that you could just normal summon and do, like, the exact same thing. <laughs> so, like, that's like a, if you want to do that, just do that. That's navigation, summon from the deck, Effecto, whatever. It, it's a lot easier than this stupid thing. So, there you go. Ooh, bonus surprise, second dishonorable mention is an unfortunate report. Yes, ah, unfortunate report might actually be one of the worst cards in the game in general, not just a bad card of the set. It is a normal trap card that reads, your opponent gets a second battle phase this turn. <laughs> Ha! The times when you would ever want that to happen are extremely niche, and even then, it, it wouldn't even be very good. The best thing I could think of is if you have something like, uh, Battle Mania, and an Amazonus, and you're trying to force your opponent into keep crashing into it, and it's also got Mist Body? Can you even have Mist Body? Or is Mist Body only for normals? I don't even remember. But some really convoluted five card combo so you can do like 4k damage to your opponent. What do you freaking do? This card is terrible. And it's even slow. It doesn't even have the dignity of being a spell to let you do your dumb wombo combo. Nope. It's really bad. It's just going to lose you the game most often. Or just be super dead because you didn't draw the other seven cards you need in order to make it work. And there actually is honorable mentions. I was kidding. Uh, but I wanted to do them in the reverse order specifically for this. Dark Fusion. Send monsters from your field or your hand in order to special summon a fiend-type fusion monster from your extra deck. It's just polymerization specifically for fiend-type fusion monsters. However, the reason why you would play this over the much more searchable polymerization is that the fusion monster you make with this thing can't be targeted by any card effects for the rest of the turn. So, that's actually pretty solid. That's a decent little effect if you were to be able to fusion summon something that able to be pushed for game like your crappy Dark Gaia, he's at least kind of, at least you have some sort of protection for him so that he can at least try to attempt to push for his big attack. The reason why it's an honorable mention and not on the list is because, uh, like I said, Dark Gaia might be his best target. <laughs> That's not good. So this card suffers from the fact that it doesn't really have a good home because all of his targets are bad. But presumably in the future, it might be okay. We might get something really cool. So keep it in the back burner. The other card is N, N, is N she the something or other, 6 Sam something, I don't know. You banish two 6 Sams from your graveyard, a special summon this thing, can't normal summon it, then you can, like, once per turn, pop a card in the field, you can't attack the turn, he uses it. He's a 6 Sam Chaos Sorcerer. He's pretty good, same basic activation requirements as the trap card, I wasn't sure which one to put on the list and which one to put as an honorable mention, because they're both pretty decent, so there you go. But anyway, sponsor time. As always, my sponsor is Minimats. Uh, if you guys want a custom cloth playmat, please go to their website, type in my promo code, uh, control the meta, control the meta, troll the meta, I don't even need that. Uh, you get like 10% off your order, helps the channel out, plus you get a really cool cloth playmat for you. And uh, they do like customs and stuff like that, so that's really awesome. But anyway, number one. Necro Face. Oh, this is a weird looking card. Necro Face is level 4 zombie monster with the following really weird effect. Once the card is normal summoned, return every single banished card in either player's banished pile into the deck. He gains a hundred? One hundos attack for each card shuffled back into the deck. So, presumably, if you both played like Pot of Desires, this thing's gonna hit the field with a big, giant amounts of attack powers. And if you're playing this like in a Banshee deck, then you probably also have extra banished cards too. So, presumably, you can do some pretty serious damage, like uh, that Grand Maju de Erza deck, 
runs this guy as another beater. But also for this other effect. If this card is banished, both players banish the top five cards from their deck. So uh, your extra copies of your uh, Necroface fuel the one you eventually summon, I think is the idea. However, if you're just trying to mill your opponent out or make your day airs so super big, you can just banish this thing off your de top to your deck with a card effect or something uh, of that nature, like, I don't know, the Metaphys to it and things like that. And, and then you can you can get their effect off and banish cards off your opponent's deck, which probably doesn't help them, but helps you. This card is currently semi-limited. It's one of the only cards that is semi-limited. We don't have a lot of semi-limits in this game, because mostly because they don't really do anything. Because, you know, put a card to like two, it's still consistent enough where it doesn't really solve a problem. So you either put it to one to make it a sacky, like, one-off, or you put it to three and just deal with the fact that it's a broken card, or you ban it outright. It's one, three, or ban. Two is a weird thing. However, uh, uh, Necroface is one of the few cards where two actually makes sense, because if you had three, you could, like, mill one out of your deck with, like, a banishy mill card, and then it would set off its effect, and then it would mill five cards, and then if you hit another copy of Necroface with the first Necroface's effect, you'd mill another ones, and presumably if you hit a third one, you would mill more. So, you, like, with three copies, you could potentially, like, mill your opponent's deck out. So it actually makes sense to have it at two, because it, the way it functions is such a peculiar way that it actually, at two, means you can get both of its effects off in a duel. One is the normal guy, one is the guy fueling him, without getting too crazy with that third one. So, it actually makes some sense to put this at two. It's one of the few cards that actually works at two, and it doesn't make it stupid. But anyway, guys, that was the list. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly didn't. It was a boring list. <laughs> it's really warm in here, and I got a live stream here in, like, a minute. Uh-oh. So, <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> anyway, guys, let, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll, then it will. I will see you guys for the next set. We're getting down to the wire. It's almost 5Ds time. Wacha! What's up, douchebags? By the power of this heel of all my calculos, I command you to subscribe to the channel. Grab your deck and be sure to click one of these other videos by David A.K. 1212. It's the best damn channel on the internet. Yeah, man. Yeah.